Well, hello. Uh, so um, here again uh, at uh, uh, the Synopsys User Group uh, 2024. And I'm Nitin Dahad, and I'm talking today to Ravi Subramaniam, who's uh, with Synopsys and joined in, well, I think, just over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, Ravi, hello. Hi, Nitin. Great to meet you. Good. Um, what's the systems group? It's a, a new group within um, Synopsys, and I think it's got relevance to what you've been talking about uh, this week about it, pervasive intelligence and addressing system compl complexity. Indeed. Um, the system design group started at Synopsys really driven by what are we seeing is happening with more and more autonomy and electrification going into many, many systems industries. And with that comes significant amount of compute and significant amount of software. So many systems industries are actually being transformed and systems customers are the fastest growing customers in uh, not only Synopsys but all of EDA. Now, when you say systems customers, I mean, Everybody ultimately is designing a system, but what you mean is uh, the customers are going up the stack now. Correct. The end product of the business we're selling to as a systems customer is not a chip. Yeah. But it's actually that that chip goes into a system that they own. Yeah, like Tesla, who was on the video yesterday with with Sassine. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that th those are there are tectonic changes going on in the systems world because of that, and it really has to do with how has product development been done in the past and how is it changing and more specifically as more and more software comes into the product there's the opportunity for new business models and there's a lot of excitement about that but there's also what does it do to product development and a lot of the traditional methods start really breaking when you have a model where I'll wait for the chip I'll write the soft I'll build the hardware write the software then test the product this was always the problem you know build a chip just throw it over the wall the software development go back. Indeed. So it becomes too long with complex chips, I guess. It becomes too long, and also with the rate of change of software and what people are trying to do with software, including send software to a product platform in the field even after the product has been shipped. So the development cycle changes from one that's more sequential to one that's more a continuous integration of traditional development, but also introducing virtualization to be able to do things earlier and earlier. And that's fundamentally the systems business or systems design group at Synopsys is really focusing on enabling virtualization and showing that the virtualization of electronics is something which Synopsys is already at success in and we will be really driving and being the leader in virtualization of electronics. Now, that's actually quite important because uh Virtualization, Omniverse have been key conversations, and you had Jensen Wong here as well. But uh, how is the virtualization of the chip different to uh, what we've heard from NVIDIA, for example? Sure. So if you look at um, virtualization of a chip, um, it's, it's a good thing to step back and say, what are all the things I want to virtualize when I build a digital twin? Um, virtualization of a chip through Virtualizer Synopsys enables you to have a virtual model of an SOC with all the IPM processors. Then that chip goes into an electronic system. It may be an ECU with multiple chips, and that ECU with those multiple chips may have operating systems, multiple operating systems running software, and all of that is sitting in a virtual product. Now that virtual product, when it's put into the environment, that is where Omniverse comes in to create the virtual world in which the oh, product the environment. Is. Okay, for, and for product testing. Exactly. Yeah. And what Omniverse will bring is, and on Monday we announced as a series of things we're doing with NVIDIA, bringing our electronic digital twin together with Omniverse. What this is about is really to take those billions of miles that people say need to be driven and actually create a synthetic version of those billion, billions of miles in the Omniverse and then use, present that to the digital twin as the environment in which the product is going to operate. What that lets you do, it lets you create specific scenarios. It also lets you focus your coverage in terms of what scenarios do you want to generate in the Omniverse to make sure you're focused on those most high impact right, types of testing. So it dramatically changes the whole verification and validation world when Omniverse comes together with the product digital twin. Uh, that's great, and then you've got uh, ANSYS also comes into the equation here because that's uh, another simulation platform, and you know you've acquired them. Okay, that's still got to go through. But tell us a little bit about that as a link sure. to that. So if you look at um, 
how Synopsys has been purposefully going after this. We started with hardware assisted verification, virtualization, and then our acquisition of Pike Tech brought a bridge to the, to the software world. Mm. Uh, Pike Tech offers the capability to very systematically generate tests, execute tests, analyze the test results, and do requirements traceability. Um, uh, many OEMs drove us to acquire Pike, Pike Tech based on how they brought order to the chaos of software development. All of that brings us the electronic digital twin. To get to the product digital twin and the virtual product in the environment, ANSYS dramatically accelerates that. And the way they do that is first, with their multi-physics capability, they can bring a mechanical domain to talk to an electronic domain. They can bring a computational fluid dynamic domain to talk to an electronic domain. And you can actually have software in the electronics running, exercising a mechanical system or a fluidic system. So that's the first step, and that's the most powerful to create the first, what we'll call comprehensive digital twin for a product. And there's multiple vectors. I think the point was made yesterday about all the multiple vectors you can simulate for. Indeed, indeed. And then how that makes it more complex. Indeed. The other thing ANSYS brings, other than multi-physics, is also vehicle dynamics. ANSYS has a leading, is a leading provider of actual crash simulation. And crash simulation is a scenario is presented, hmm. then actually how does a vehicle deform? the material deformation. That includes whether the airbag actually deploys properly. So there's a combination of things that needs to come in with vehicle dynamics, which is quite complex, and is completely outside the electrical domain. But the electronics is what's triggering many of these things. Mm. So the latency of the operation of these, all of those come together. And then finally, ANSYS brings automatic embedded software code generation for safety and security systems. And that really is powerful because the testing of software for safety is a big challenge. And when you need to ASIL certify yes. a particular system, it's not simply certifying the circuit, it's certifying the safety mechanism, mm -hmm. which includes software and hardware together. So that's all just in the realm of how ANSYS will accelerate what we want to do. And then um, ANSYS already has a strong relationship with NVIDIA, working with them in the Omniverse for all their domains. So it will again catalyze us going out to the Omniverse. And, and how is that, uh, there's still some way to go on that ANSYS uh, finalization of the um, acquisition? Yes. Yeah, we, as we said, uh, we expect that to close sometime in the first half of uh, next year. Okay. And, um, you know, in the meantime, you know, our customers are keeping us really busy on solving their big challenges, especially as we see more and more of the industry realize the opportunity of software-defined vehicle. And I believe we're really at the beginning of the beginning. Indeed. Um, and what's the, the next 12 months for Systems Group? What are you, what are you looking at next? Sure. So um, Systems Group has a broad swath of customers. We have hyperscalers as customers, automotive, mobile, industrial, um, networking. What we are seeing is um, the biggest thing for us to focus on is the unprecedented complexity of what we see customers trying to do. Customers trying to emulate systems with 32 ZBoos combined together. Right, and Just that's your new uh, prototype and simulation platform. Exactly, and then we have other groups that are trying to use Platform Architect to architect multi-die systems. We just announced Platform Architect multi-die, yes. which helps you make decisions about how do you build these disaggregated systems, okay. right? If, and so the, the, the biggest thing for the next 12 months from our ordinary business is how do we enable the complexity. We're doing many things for the first time okay. with our customers, oh, okay. right? So that's both exciting, a little scary, but uh, there are big engineering challenges to solve and, and that's uh, what we're here for. And that's what you've been brought on for. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, Ravi, thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. Great to talk to you.